To this day, I had volunteered to a ski patrol. 7.30am we were all equipped with necessary amounts of food and weapons and we were all ready to go. The horses are all tired. They have to rest. So, we equipped our skis and didn't let the slight snowfall disturb us, even if the conditions weren't the best possible. Our mission was to check the Russian village Kotsimus that had been captured by our troops before Christmas. But that was all but a pleasure to do because of the fact that there might be minefields anywhere. Damn, even the slightest sound makes me jump like a bunny. Yeah, I pretty much feel the same. To be honest, I don't think there's anything to be afraid of. I could bet a ration that there hasn't been a Russian here since Christmas. And I was right. Not a trace of Russians anywhere. The clock was about 4.30pm when we started to prepare to go back where the horses were waiting. A short meal consisting of a piece of bread and cheese was enjoyed before going back. We thought the 30 kilometer distance to get back would be a piece of cake, but that wasn't the case. None of us could expect the troubles that we were about to run into. The finished Sisu would be tested. The snow is like glue. It keeps sticking under my skis. There's not much to do. Scraping away the snow and ice from the skis is just a waste of time. The skis will collect up that amount of snow in a few minutes. And so, we were forced to keep going. We skied at the front in turns, one man at a time. The man in the front was swaying like a pig, while the man at the back was cooled by the chilling wind. Halfway back to the horses, it was my turn to take the lead. We had to cross a three kilometer long lake. When we crossed the lake, I was so tired that I threw myself into the snow. I put some of the snow in my mouth so I could drink something. But my friend warned me and reminded me that if I ate snow, I could get ill. And soon I felt the freezing wind chilling down my sweaty body. It was impossible to take a long break. Soon we arrived at the place where the horses were waiting for us. But there was no one there. The worst case scenario was a fact. Why did he just leave? He can't do this! He left only 10 minutes ago. We shall fire a warning shot to make him turn back. That's the last thing we'll do. If you shoot, he'll think we're the Russians. Flee and ride the horses to death. Shooting won't help us right now. The clock was about 1.30 p.m. when we left the horses. And now the clock was 8.30 p.m. It had taken us seven hours to ski 60 kilometers. And seven hours was way too long for our friend to wait. When we arrived, our friend should have been waiting for us with hot coffee, bread, and marmalade. An anxious feeling started to raise when we slowly realized what our situation is. Something needs to be done. First off, we decided to collect some fuel for a fireplace. And soon a campfire lit up the dark woods around us. I have 75 grams of butter and almost half a loaf. Only two pieces of crisp bread some cheese, and half a can of pork. I wish I had more to share. Damn, I'm hungry. I only ate a piece of bread with the meat slice and drank some tea before we left. We could screw off the hats on the grenade and heat the snow in them. I hope you're fucking kidding. 
That's what we have the can of pork for. That's the best drink I've ever had. Quick! Extinguish the fire! And so, we continued our journey. After five kilometers, my friend gets ill, and we have to decide to change our route to the closest accommodation. All of us are really tired, and the breaks now reoccur within every 200 meters. The clock is now 11.30 p.m., and my friend lies down and demands something to drink. We light another fire and start melting some snow. We share the last few pieces of our food supplies brotherly and continue our fight against the weather. This damn snow slows and exhausts us so incredibly much. Just be quiet and keep going. Whining won't help us. According to the map, we should have reached the accommodation long ago. Is there an error on the map? We must keep going. Just don't fall asleep or the devil will take you. Once again, we continue our journey at desperation. The forest thins out and we see a lake that we think is the lake close to the accommodation. We wander around, but we don't manage to gather any wisdom about where we are. A telephone wire is spotted and we decide to follow it. After an hour of pain, we finally spot the barracks we started from 24 hours ago. The clock is 7.30 a.m. when we stumble into the barracks. Where have you been? We already started to think we'd never see you two again. I don't care about the guards' comments. Soon, I fall away into sleep. Hello. I know, it's a long time since I uploaded a proper short movie, but here's one. I hope you enjoyed it. This time I thought, why not share some Finnish history with my subscribers? After all, I lived here. And it's only one and a half week until the summer holidays start, and it will last until middle of August. Which means I'll have a lot of spare time and that I will be able to make videos more frequently and of higher quality. I also want to remind her that I'm live streaming on Twitch every Saturday evening. It's like 8 o'clock here in Finland. I'd be really happy if you joined me in the chat. It's always fun to chat with my subscribers. At last, I want to promote my secondary channel. I basically upload everything there that doesn't fit into this channel like uh, all kinds of gameplay and even stream highlight highlights from when I'm streaming. I'll put links for everything in the description. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. Stay awesome and I'll see you later.